Hello and welcome back to my channel. The Flash Fallon has just finished a few minutes ago and it was a pretty exciting race. So let's start the recap. We had an early break consisting of Kuhn Baumann, Joe Roskopf, Robin Carpenter, Kenneth Van Roy and Tom Bergton. And those guys got a gap of up to five minutes and it stayed around that margin for quite a while. And then we came to the final circuit and that's where the race really started to pick up. Like I expected, the riders started to attack and went for that chance because of the change of the route that consisted of more climbs than usually in Flash Vallon. Among those attackers were Benedetti, Pericon and Caruso. They got a gap and of about 20 seconds so not the, not the favorites exactly but still some riders who tried their luck and went long and then with 45 kilometers to go we actually had Nathan Haas, Tom Dett, Jelte Slakta, Marcinski, uh, Gorka Isagere and Gogol joined this chasing group but it never went up to more than I think 30 seconds or so the peloton had a close eye on that move because these riders actually they were a little bit more dangerous but yeah right around that time with uh, a little bit over 40 kilometers to go the top favorite Julian Alaphilippe needed a bike change and some were thinking that maybe if some of the other favorites were now pushing hard they could actually drop him but he got back in safely shortly after that but around that time, because it was really hectic, a lot of riders tried to attack and with that usually also a lot of crashes happen. We had guys uh, down on the road were like Pozzovivo, Yates, Kreuziger, among the better riders, among the better climbers. Uh, so those guys crashed out. Uh, Yanni Zagira also crashed out of the race. So yeah, we had quite a, quite a few crashes around that 40 kilometer mark because it was really nervous in the bunch. And yeah, if, uh, if the riders are nervous, they don't pay attention and they slip in corners and stuff like that. Always sad to see some of the pre-race favorites get derailed by that, but every crash is bad, obviously. But yeah. Um, the break got caught at the second time up the Mur, and then we ha had a group gone clear that consisted actually of guys like Formolo, Schachmann, Slakta again, Isagiri again, Maas, Poles, Demarki, Turns, Valens, Mola, Luis Leon Sanchez, amongst others. And that was a really, really dangerous group because that was about 15 riders, some of the best climbers in the race, not the pre-race favorites because of their sprint, but yeah, some really dangerous riders and no one wanted to let that go clear. So with 20 kilometers to go, they were reeled back in. And from there on out, it was a quiet race. We had an attack of Marcinski again, and I think that was not the smartest move by Lotto Sudal. We talked before the race that they actually had Tim Valens, Van Endert and also Björk Lambrecht. And if they really wanted to soften up the race, uh, the favorites, if they wanted to make the race hard for them, they would have to attack with one of those three guys. Not with Marcinski, who is not a bad rider, but He's also not a threat for the guys like Alaphilippe or Valverde and their teams. So yeah, I think it was a great idea in general to let someone attack of Lotto Sudal, but they chose the wrong guy. They seemed like they wanted to protect their three captains for the race, but We've seen with Astana and with the Koenig in the last few races that you actually have to attack with your strongest guys. And Lotto did not do that. 
they just sent their fourth guy up the road and he was never a danger man. He got joined later on by Matej Mohoric and obviously that was his only chance of victory because he also does not pack the punch. He's a good climber but he does not pack the punch at the end up the Muir so he also tried to go long. He joined Marcinski and they got a gap of up to 25 seconds. But then it was actually Dres Divinins uh, who led the chase for the Koenig quick step with Henrik Maas in his wheel. And then with seven kilometers to go, when we had the second to last climb, it was actually only Henrik Maas left as a helper for Alaphilippe. But the young Spaniard did an amazing job because his tempo was so high, no one could attack over that climb. And he also reduced the bunch quite a bit. So respect to Mars for his job because he set the victory up that would follow of Alaphilippe. He did one heck of a sprint. He was the top favorite up the Muir. It was almost Fogelsang who beat him once again. Those two are probably the two best guys of the spring if we are not talking Cobalt Classics. It was always Vogelsang versus, uh, versus Alaphilippe this year. We had it at Strade Bianche. We had it also just recently again and uh, at the Amstel Gold Race. And now these two at, it, at each other again. So yeah, once again for the third time already this season, Vogelsang and Alaphilippe, the two strongest riders of the day. But let's take a look at the complete top 10. So in third place we actually had Ulissi, a name I didn't have on my radar that high. So great race from him. Then fourth was Björk Lambrecht, who we talked about before. He seems to be the future. He already won the U23 version of Liege Pastan Liege. And now two top 10s in his first two Ardennes Classics and in the, in the pros. So great race and great result for him. He is one to look out for in the upcoming years. Then fifth, exactly the position where I expected him to be, Maximilian Schachmann. Good result for him, but not quite yet able to be at the top step. While he was actually put in perfect position because Bora started their lead out with about three kilometers to go and he was set up perfectly, but yeah, wasn't meant to be for him. Still a good result. Great spring all in all for Maximilian Schachmann. Um, then in sixth place we had Moloma actually, so quite a strong finish from him. Then we had Conrad. Michael Matthews was able to hang on for another top 10 finish at Flash Wallon. Maybe one day he can actually win this race. He has now two top 10s with two participations. Uh, and the top 10 was rounded out by Van Endert and Gasparotto. And in 11th place, I want to also mention... Ala, Ala, I want to also mention Valverde. Almost said Alaphilippe, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, won the winner of the last two years and four years before that it was always Valverde so forgive me for mixing them up so yeah uh, 9, 10, 11 all riders near the back end of their career with Van Endert and also Gasparotto in their mid-30s and Valverde or you can also say already in his late 30s so yeah these three riders are uh, representing the older generation but they could still hang on for a top 10 finish at least two of them could but they are the faded towards the end i talked about that issue before that he does not seem as strong as in previous years he only has one victory so far this season while ala philippe already has taken his ninth victory of the season so I don't know what it is. Is age finally catching up with Valverde or is it actually that he just um, has no motivation anymore because for years he was chasing those rainbow stripes 
And now that he has finally gotten them, there is basically nothing left to win for him. It is like Gilbert if he would win Sanremo. What are his goals for the future, for future races? He has won everything in Valverde, everything he could win, he has won. And now, well, what can he do? So I think it's, it's a combination of those two things. He is getting older and with that you start to lose some of your abilities as a rider. But also on the other hand that he does not have the drive he used to have in previous years. Those rainbow stripes, uh, stripes always gave him something to aim for. And now that he has them it's quite hard to find another goal for yourself. But yeah. I don't think he's completely done yet, but his days of dominating races are, are over. The one who's doing that now is Julian Alaphilippe. This is the fourth time he has ridden Flash Wallon and his worst finish is a second place. So the first two participations he was second behind Valverde. Then he missed one race because of an injury and then he has won it twice. So. Yeah, riding a race four times and uh, finishing inside the top two podium positions is your worst result. So this race really suits him. We once again had the uphill sprint, but the group was quite a little bit... Um, there were less riders in that final group than we usually have. Let's say it that way. Because some of the attacks, so we still did not get to see a lone attacker pull it off and go from distance to take the victory but I think if they keep this course for the future it is still a possibility that that could happen because of the two new climbs they added inside the final circuit today Alaphilippe won the uphill sprint out of a much smaller group than we than we've seen over the last few years where Valverde and he dominated the scene so the result is the same, but the racing towards that point was quite a bit different than usually. And honestly, I think if Lotto would have put one of their three stronger riders on the attack with 20 kilometers to go and not Marcinski, this could have been a different story because there was only one team chasing, that was De Koenig, and they only had one guy chasing because it was Devonins was chasing with Mars in his wheel but Mars only took over the chasing duties once Devonins was done and yeah Marcinski that was no problem for Devonins to reel him back in but if Valens would have attacked or Lambrecht himself that could have been a different story inside the last 15-20 kilometers we did not get to see that because of team tactics I also hope that Astana would send up uh, a few riders, but they only send up Gorka Izagira. Well, Jan crashed out. Lutsenko did not seem up to his part. And yeah, in the final, they obviously had Vogelsang. So still a good result for the team, but I expected more from them. Uh, from them. I expected them to really tear the race apart. I also expected more from UAE, especially Dan Martin, but like always he's badly positioned at the start of the final climb and that's why he loses out so often. Also lost out on a top 10 was, was uh, Kwiatkowski, who actually started the sprint up the Muir the final time quite early. He led the bunch with over 500 meters to go. And that was probably the reason because of that is why he lost. Because he had to, he had all the favorites in his wheel while he was already in the wind. Even though wind is not that much of a factor on that climb. But yeah, if you are on the front and have to push hard and the others can come around you, that's um, always a disadvantage. So Kwiatkowski and Dan Martin, some of my pre-race favorites, they were not up to the task this year. 
while Lala Philippe was in Valverde. We already talked about fading towards the end. He was actually quite well positioned, but then in the last few meters he was fading. It, it felt like uh, he was done in the last few meters. Usually that's when he has his best kick and this time he was fading. So yeah, really interesting race. The outcome was expected, but it is encouraging for upcoming editions of Flash Fallon. It is, in my opinion at least, not anymore just the uphill version of the Shell de Pries, a sprint finish for climbers, but actually a real classics race, which if, ri if ridden hard enough can be very selective. We've seen that at the end of today that we only had a group of, I think, 30 riders or so going to the line, while usually it is the whole peloton which starts the final climb up the Murdui. So, yeah, can't wait for future editions of this race. But also, the Ardennes are not done yet. We have still Liege, Bastogne de Liege to ride again on the next weekend. Last year's winner, Bob Jungels. We'll have to see if he can repeat or if Alaphilippe this time can take victory. Last year he had to watch his teammate take victory while he himself was in a group behind waiting for other teams to chase him down, which did not happen. So yeah, this will be an interesting race. My preview video, my preview video for that will come up in the following days. I don't know how much time I will have because I'm also very interested in football and the draft is right around the corner. So that together with my day job and sleeping will make it quite hard to actually do some cycling stuff also. Um, so we'll have to see about that. I will of course do a video for Liège Pastin de Liège. But other than that, the next few days might be a little bit quiet. We'll have to see. That's it for me for now. I'm out.